<laughs> you know, when I originally started my intro, I was talking to the camera and, you know, talking to you guys, and I realized I did not press the record button, so I see it recording now. Guys, Jason here. Welcome to another episode of Metal and Beer. This is episode number 46 of my Metal and Beer series. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Please let me know in the comments if you are, and also let me know what beer you're drinking. So I'm going to show you guys how to play an extremely cool death metal riff on a seven string guitar and then hang around for the beer tasting. Alright guys, before I teach you this death metal riff, remember we are playing a 7 string today. If you don't have a 7 string, that's okay. Actually, it's not okay. Go buy a 7 string. But seriously, if you just have a 6 string, just play the notes on your 6 string because I really want you guys to learn this technique that I'm going to show you in this death metal riff. And here's the riff that you're about to play. Now I'm going to break this death metal riff down into a few different components so that it's really easy to learn and play. And I want to start with the picking technique that we're using here. Obviously we're alternate picking. That's kind of like the foundation of a lot of death metal riffs and that's what makes it so cool. But there's one little trick here I want to show you and that's the palm muting method. So we're not doing this where you're full on palm muting. Although it does sound kind of cool, like a machine gun. Uh, and we're also not leaving the string open like this. That sounds more like a choo-choo train. Kind of cool. Instead, I'm doing kind of a light touch. Almost like Genesis Invisible Touch. I had to make an 80s pun. You guys remember that, don't you? Uh, actually, Genesis was pretty cool. I love Genesis and Phil Collins and a lot of the 80s, uh, 80s stuff. We're going off on a tangent. Anyway, so I'm giving this like a really light touch on uh, on the bridge here. You know, kind of a light touch between my palm and the string. So it's more like this. Now, of course, you're here in my studio, just out here in the room. That's not the recorded version uh, that you heard, you know, in the beginning of the video. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind. You're not doing a full on palm mute, but you're not leaving your palm off the string either. And even more, I kind of fluctuate how my palm rests from time to time. In other words, if I feel like my palm is, is going too heavy into that, no pun intended by heavy, actually it's a really good pun, uh, if, if I feel like it's going too heavy, heavy handed there, uh, then I might just back it off just a little bit and I might fluctuate back and forth throughout the riff. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, uh, leave me the questions in the comments and, and I'll try to explain that more. Maybe I'll come up with a better way to do it. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let me know also in the comments if, you know, if you're grasping this. All right, now let's tackle the actual death metal riff here. So I'm gonna play it at normal speed one time and after that, I'm just gonna pick the single notes and I'll throw the tablature up during that part here so you can see the single notes you know, on the tab. But here it is at regular speed. Now, real quick before I show you the notes, if you notice how I was palm muting, I was palm muting a little heavier on this part, on that open B string, but on the other notes, I kind of backed off. I was palm muting kind of here and there, kind of fluctuating back and forth, but it was almost, you know, all the way off on some parts of that. So that gives your tone these little nuances here. All right, so now let's break down the notes. I'm just gonna hit the single strings, okay? And I'll throw up the tablature, it'll be somewhere up there.
All right, so I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit more and I'm gonna throw in the palm muting here, okay? So the challenge here, and let me know in the comments if, if this is actually the challenge for you guys. Um, the challenge for me with these types of death metal riffs is the string skipping because your palm, your palm muting, you know, that light kind of on and off palm muting, that's one technique that you have to remember constantly and your alternate picking pretty fast. So you're kind of like speed picking here on your lower notes and you're string skipping on top of that. So there's like three techniques rolled into one riff here. And that may be kind of difficult for some of you. I know it was for me when I first started playing, you know, more of death metal style music. That was one of the things. It's like, okay, well, I don't want to play in just the same area. I want to play on different strings. I don't want to always be on that heaviest string. I want to riff around a little bit and be, you know, in more places throughout the fretboard, which is something I encourage you guys always to do. So, you know, going from that B string in the seven string case uh, to that, you know, what is it, A, the A string. That can be kind of tough. So go back to the single notes if you're having a hard time with that. You know, go back to. And that's just gonna get your fingers used to where they're supposed to go. And then you can incorporate that speed picking part. By now, you're probably wondering, hmm, what's Jason drinking today? Well, I'm glad you asked. Today I am drinking the Dogfish Head 90 Minute Imperial IPA. Now, I'm doing something else that's quite exciting as well. We're also about to grill together this delicious looking steak right here. And that's the grill there prepared. We gotta let that burn down some. All right guys, so while we're waiting for that to burn down, let's pour our beer. Now, one quick shout out to my buddy Craig in Australia. He's actually the one that recommended me do this video here. Um, you know, like a beer and grilling type video. So I just fit this in with the Metal One Beer series here. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I know I'm gonna enjoy it. So again, that's the Dogfish Head 90 Minute Imperial IPA. Now, whenever I see the word Imperial, I get kind of excited. Cause that means it's gonna be pretty good and semi strong. Um, this stuff is, what is it here? It's 9%, so yeah, it's kind of a strong brew. And I always like to read the little blurbs on here, on the bottle. And it says, our continually hopped Imperial IPA, whose powerful malt backbone stands up to the extreme hopping rate for a pungent, not crushing hop flavor. So let's see if it lives up to its claim. I've actually had one of these already today. Wow, that's tasty, but guys, I need to check on the charcoal. Let's see if we can put the steak on. All right, guys, so this is burned down quite a bit. What I do is I open this little door here. It's like a pathway to the abyss. Actually, it probably is the abyss like hell because it's hot. <laughs> and I just kind of spread these out a little bit. Now we're ready to throw on the steak. So I've got this nice and marinated here. We're just gonna throw it on just like this. This is almost like a cooking show, but <laughs> what I'll do is I'll cook it on kind of high heat. So I'll roll this up a little bit here. I'll cook it on kind of high heat on each side for about a minute. So I'll flip it here in about 45, 50 more seconds. All right, so it's cooked about a minute on what I call high heat. And now we're just gonna roll this back down so the charcoal is at the low point. And I'm going to actually move the steak off to the side a little bit just to, you know, a spot on the grill that has less heat here. And then what I do is we close this baby up for four or five minutes here. Master Forge. Almost like Master of 
puppets. All right, so we've got to wait on that to cook a little bit more. I like to cook my steaks, you know, on lower heat for a while, and that way you really just get those flavors in there. So let's have a few more sips of this while we wait. All right, guys, so our steak is almost done. I can't put the camera too close to the grill because then I start getting these warning messages on my camera. It's like, hey, I'm about to die because it's too freaking hot out here. And, you know, the camera gets hot and all. So, anyway, um, I'm about to take it off and we're going to enjoy some steak and beer. So, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Metal and Beer. Actually, it was Metal, Beer, and Grilling. Leave me a comment and let me know what you're grilling or what your favorite food to grill with beer is and until the next video as always keep it metal